with um, this place now for a while. And so actually being here is kind of instrumental for me to be at the Center for Sustainability to kind of get some ideas about what I'm talking today. So I'm just going through my affiliation and kind of tell you about my, my background. So I'm a, a microbial biotechnologist. I'm a professor of microbial biotechnology at the Department of Biotechnology at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. So my background is uh, genetics. So I do genetics but, uh, and work with, microbial, with microbes. But so my main focus actually is bioenergetics. So that's how I see the world is in bioenergetic terms. And so that led me down to a lot of different things that I look at. So um, one of the, the things that connected me with here was looking at bioeconomy and so looking at energy flows through biological systems. And so that got me, got me you know, interested in what I'm doing from a different perspective actually. And uh, being a person in bio, uh, microbial biotechnology that you know, works on solving everything with, um, with technology, that kind of was a bit of a, a wake up call for me to actually reevaluate what I'm doing. So that's, that's my academic background and my connection to the center here. So I went and had a sabbatical here that was for me very uh, fruitful and insightful. Um, then I started a, a company here as well. So I'm now a retiring professor, you may say. Uh, and so that's here in um, Otipodi, uh, Dan Eden. And uh, then I'm also affiliated with the um, Ututika Heoranga Iatoroa, so Basic Income New Zealand. So I'm a bit biased, so just keep that in mind when I'm talking about basic income. Uh, and uh, you should also know that the opinions that I give are not are my own opinions. So I'm affiliated with that, so I, I thought I'd put that up, but it's my take on things. and. And, uh, and so that, that you don't, uh, that you know to, to sort it in the right way. So what I want to talk about today is uh, basic income and the uh, connection it has with uh, society. So that's, you know, like a, a given, but also with environmental uh, transformation, environmentalism. So that's uh, 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 a point that I want to, to work out. So now the dramatic rolling in. So what is a basic income? So it has many different names. And so, so just to, to define it. Um, so a, a basic income is sometimes called a universal basic income, a citizen's dividend, an unconditional basic income, a citizen's, citizen's basic income. And uh, you know, all of these things that, that you see on, on the, that list. And so it has been, uh, defined by many people in different ways over over time, uh, but basically what what it means is is um, is this, which is everyone. It's actually very easy. Everyone regularly receives the same amount of money by the government without means testing, and so it's like a one sentence um, you know statement, but it actually is a very important um, statement. And so I will like go through every one of these highlighted words and, and just uh, reflect on that. So everyone means like everybody should get a basic income. So it doesn't depend on if you're like in work or not in work, if you are retired or not, if you are um, uh, looking for work, if you're a student, uh, there is some, some um, discussion about if children should get a full basic income or part of it. Uh, so that would be the, 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 uh, the same amount of money. But basically everyone in a society that's part of the society will receive um, a basic income, even the people who don't really need it of, uh, for where, where you would think like, oh, they have enough money. They would also receive a basic income. And so the benefit of that would be that it, it forms communities and nobody can say, oh, you know, like you're cheap uh, like you, because you get a basic income. I don't get it. So it forms a community. So it's, a part, it's an important part of having a basic income that is universal and, and it is, um, it is uh, there for, for everyone. Um, then the regularly is also important. So that means you can count on it. So it's not something you have to go and ask every month to get it. So once you are in that system, like when you're born in a country, when you're born in a, in a society, you get it without question every, every month or every quarter month or every week, you will get a, a basic income. 
And uh, so it's the same amount for of money for everyone. So you don't uh, you don't distinguish between people who need it and people who have enough money. And it is by the government. So it is a central uh, organization. It's a function of the government. It's not some private uh, organizations that that would do that. It's not you know, like some some charity that would be involved in this. So it's a, a central government issued. Um, uh, um, uh, uh, income and it is without means testing. So that means uh, there's no, you, you don't have to like bear, lay bare like your relationships that you have or your your uh, your um, your wealth or anything like that. It's just an automatic payment that is is done for for uh, is um, is uh, acquired by by everyone. And so, are there any questions? So I thought I'd go through and also ask questions. I don't know if people online can ask questions about that. Are they uh, are they vocal or? Yeah, I'll ask them to, to put it in the chat, maybe. Yeah, uh, can you put it in the chat if you have any questions about that? All right. Well, maybe something comes up, uh, then I then I will um, I will um, address that. So yeah, no questions about that here. So everyone is familiar with that because in some you know, like sometimes you hear reports about a basic income. It's usually uh, money that's paid to people who are unemployed or money that's paid to to people who fall in some like job seekers or like yeah yeah. Uh, everyone like everyone in terms of age as well. Is there are like age like, gap? So, like eighteen? No, not no. It would be for, once, for you're once you're born, or like maybe like for children, there's some discussion. Maybe children should receive a little less. Uh, but basically, everyone. It's actually in New Zealand, in a way, like you have New Zealand Super, so so uh, the, the retired people actually become basically a, a, a non-means tested uh, basic income already. So there's some some uh, part of the population that gets that already. And so. The, the other um, question that, that I would advocate for is a livable basic income. So it should meet all the costs that allow for life with dignity. So that's the definition that I like, but not everyone would agree with that a basic income should cover all these costs. And so there would be you know, like the necessities of life, housing, food, clothing, health, and education, so that you can live, uh, that it is enough to have a, a life, um, live a life with, with dignity. And so, so then there's a question like, you know, like some of these things can also be covered by basic services. And so like some of the basic services we are familiar with, like we already have like universal health care or universal education. So some of these things may not be a cost that you get uh, compensated for, but they may, they may actually be a, a basic service. And so we are familiar with education, schools and clinics. But you know, you could also think maybe there could be some kind of open kitchens where you don't have to worry about, uh, uh, you know, like the, the food you get, get or open or housing that's available. So that's you know that that is uh, uh, an open that that is not uh, the basic income could or could not include these basic services, but they should be provided. So the 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 idea of a of a, a basic income that that. Most people would would argue for would be one that allows you to live a life uh, in dignity. So, what that amount is is probably uh, negotiable or can be discussed. Uh, are there any questions about that? Does it make make sense? All right. So then the, the next question arises, of course, is so why why do we need a basic income? <laughs> and so I would argue, or like uh, many people argue that it is uh, a, a very important step to establish the society that we want and also to establish the environment and the planet that we want. And so that is the, the base motivation that that, uh, that drives the, the base uh, establishment of a basic income. And so why, like, you know, I will just briefly go into the, the society we want, so what society do, society do we want? And I would argue we all want to have a fair society. And so right now we're kind of living in that uh, kind of realm where we have that um, dispense, uh, um, where we dispense kind of reality and we just accept things that don't are not fair. Like why is it, for example, fair that uh, in Aotearoa we, we produce so much food? 
but people go hungry. Like if you think about it, it doesn't make any sense that we are in that system that we just like, uh, we just take that as a given because it's part of the system. Uh, and why is it fair that, you know, some people inherit money and some people don't, some people have to work for money. Why is it fair that some billionaire can fly in and become a member of this community uh, not don't, doesn't get stuck in in the MIQ, whereas you know Kiwis that want to come home get stuck. So there are all these these um, these questions that have to do with with inequality and with fairness that we a lot of times just brush to the side. And so why how would a basic income come help with that? And so I will actually use the um, uh, the points that. Um, uh, somebody named uh, Guy Standing from the Basic Income Earth Network made. And so that is the, that we are battling uh, eight giants. It's actually a book that he wrote. So he's a very important driver of the ideas of, of basic income. And so he, uh, you know, I um, kind of structured and gave it headlines. So his uh, eight, so now there are more than eight uh, giants. So I, I uh, kind of, um, grouped it into uh, inequality and uh, destruction. So that one is like directed towards the, the uh, society and the other would be directed towards the environment. And so inequality is something that we experience every day and it's becoming worse and worse over, over time. So we are now at a very, our society becomes more and more uh, unequal. So there's more um, uh, people who have a, Fewer people have a lot, and a lot of people will have very little. And so this is a, a big problem. So it leads to insecurity, like everyone is, is um, dependent on, on uh, their, their next paycheck. Uh, this causes stress, and, uh, and uh, overall, uh, a lot of uh, our population lives in uh, uh, something that uh, Guy Standing calls precarity. Which is like we, we are, our life is precarious. We're only like one paycheck away from complete disaster, one sick day away from being fired, one uh, you know one accident that that just gets us over over the edge. And so then, how do we get over the edge? We get into debt. Uh, so a lot of people carry debt that you know, like if you look at it up, you know, from an objective standpoint, it's hardly ever possible to even ever repay it. And we are just getting used to to this kind of living under under um, under and yeah it causes a lot of of, of stress and then uh, you know recently we get a a, a big increase in, in populism so that is you can also call it fascism but they kind of go hand in hand where you know for all of these these stresses that are caused um, we we look for a scapegoat and some some other some other so we just it, the um, political leaders try to to use that insecurity and stress um, to uh, to blame others for that. Uh, and at the same time, we are also facing uh, the destruction of our planet, and so that is uh, driven by a constant idea of growth that our um, uh, financial system demands. Um, so we are. We are always worried that things have to grow, things have to grow, and uh, so that drives um, drives environmental destruction. There's uh, automation that is uh, used to be thought of as something that would, you know, give us more leisure time, but uh, now we figured out that it actually takes away our work and it causes more stress and it also destroys the planet more and more. So, like, we have more efficient ways, basically, through automation to uh, damage our planet, and you know we are in a, in a mass extinction event. We just don't notice it because people. I mean, most of us don't notice it. People who are in tune with nature notice that that species are disappearing, that the, the environment is changing changing rapidly. So that's the the eight uh, giants that that um, that uh, guy standing pointed out. And I just grouped them into um, the. Uh, like one that has to do with our society and one that has to do uh, with the destruction of our, of our planet. So then I'll move on to the environment. And so we want to have an environment that is actually useful for our children. So I think that's the main for our for future generation. And somehow we are in that, that trap that we are 
constantly basically doing self-destructive uh, as a society we are self-destructing and um and so that's that's a, a big problem that was mentioned bef before by guys standing as well that you know like our hunger for for growth um uh, destroys destroys the the basis of of what we are what our life is is based on so um so that's that's uh, something that was really well um, figured out by somebody named uh, Dana uh, Meadows. And so I had a chance encounter with, uh, with um, John Richardson, who has um, uh, worked in, in systems dynamics for, for a long time. And so I ran into him uh, at a conference. It was a completely different conference. He was just a guest there. And so he introduced me to systems dynamics. And so what systems dynamics is, is like, um, it's uh, a sophisticated way of simulating processes that's basically kind of like an engineering approach to understanding the world where you uh, see the world like as a, as a circuit with inputs, with feedback loops. And, and so you can resolve a lot of, lot of things that you, that you, um, when you, when you look at it, it seem to very complex, can resolve that very nicely this uh, systems dynamics approach. And so um, John Richardson um, pointed me to Dana Meadows, which is uh, unfortunately, uh, she passed away in early 2000s. And so she, she actually applied it to, um, to, sustain, to understand sustainable systems and what makes systems uh, sustainable. And so, um, so she figured out through this simulation that actually we had, that growth technology markets and subsidies are destroying our planet. And, uh, and inequality is actually a root uh, cause of environmental destruction. So I want to uh, give you an example of, of that, uh, using actually an example that uh, Dana, there's a lecture of Dana Meadows on the, on the internet. If you want, if you're looking for, for that and just write you know, fishing, um, you can actually get a, a very, um, a very, uh, complete um, uh, description of the model that I, that I try to develop here quickly. And so, so her model is um, that, so she looks at fishing uh, from over, over time. And so first she considers how is, has fishing been done in, you know, like in the past, so where you had a community that lived next to the ocean, they had boats, they went out, they caught fish, then they lived off the fish, and so they, they went out and they had bad days and they caught a lot of fish and they had good days and, and, and uh, they had bad days, they caught little, they had good days, they caught a lot. And so, but that, that system is sustainable. So that, that system is a sustainable system where, because they have alternative to it, that, that fish as well. So they have other things they can, they can eat, so they can go back and forth. And so, so now that, that model now um, is, it has changed due to, growth technology and markets so that now, of course, um, there are companies whose sole, um, sole purpose is to go fishing. And so now, uh, so now they employ technology to fish a lot. And, uh, and they have markets now where they, it's not like a local thing anymore where you just fish for your local population, but you can actually take all that fish and, and, and sell it on. And so that, that has the effect now that when, when you look at the, the, um, the model that she developed, that at some point you, you, you throw more and more fishing boats, more and more technology at it. And at some point you reach a state where the fish don't find each other anymore to mate. And at that point you, you, are, you become uneconomic. And usually that should, that should then is, is again kind of reaches a balance where where if you if you now let, let the market in a way decide you, you may you may end up something that is periodically crashing and going up and down and crashing and going up and down um, and uh, but if you if you now use subsidies so people are used to eating fish and so now a government would intervene uh, intervene and uh, and you know uh, establish the subsidies then this would actually uh, uh, incur even a worse. Um, uh, would, would, would be not a solution to the, the problem. And so, so in, in the end, so all fishes will be caught. And so the last fishes will, in, in her explanation, will, will, be, will be caught uh, because um, and if you live in, an equal, in, a, in a society that has um, equal income, 
most likely um, it, it will you know have these uh, boom and crash cycles. It will be you know devastating for for the ecosystem, but somehow it will peter along. But if you have a highly inequal system, then the rich people will demand their fishes. They will demand fish. They will demand uh, fish, and uh, because if if you model that in that there is a, an unequal distribution of of income, actually the last fish will be caught and it will be a great economic success because there will be like one company that goes after it and you know, there will be hundreds of companies that may go after it. Some of them will fail, but the one will actually catch that last fish and will sell it for a trillion dollar to some billionaire or trillionaire in that case. <laughs> and uh, and uh, you know, like that company will say like, wow, all the, all the, all the, um, the uh, the shareholders made a big profit, but that will be the last fish. So like economy doesn't work. Uh, our understanding of economy doesn't doesn't work with with the natural environment and, and unequal wealth distribution is is a root cause for for uh, destroying um, our environment. And so, if you talk to most economists, not all, there are some good economists, I would say, but uh, most economists will just say that's not a problem that there are no fish because we have alternatives to fish. And so I, I'm surprised. I mean, I'm amazed that when you talk to to uh, economists, they, a lot of economists, they just say like, "Ah, oh, the market will figure it out. You just like switch your source. You will find alternatives. You just have to throw enough money at it, and it will, it will solve it. It will work itself out." And so that's that's. Uh, I mean, I, and I, I present this um, model, that fish model, that. Uh, uh, Dana Meadows developed just to, to sh show the absurdity of, of the system we are actually employing and, and uh, the, uh, the um, role that inequality plays in actually destroying, destroying ourselves. And as she said, growth, technology, market, and, uh, and subsidies will not save us. And so I was in the job of you know, uh, thinking that technology saves us and will save us and you know, was very technology um, uh, biased, and uh, in, in many cases, technology is, is not. Uh, technology is, is not the solution. It, it makes a lot of times things worse. All right, then. So how did we get there? And so one of the, the there are many reasons, but one of the reasons that uh, is familiar to to um, that can be framed in a Western understanding. So I'm you know, a Western person, so I lack a lot of other knowledge. So I'm going with, with what is written in, in Western literature is uh, the, the loss of the commons so that we have mon monetary transaction or replace the commons. And so what is the commons like in, in Europe in the olden days, so middle ages and before, actually there was something like a commons land that was not didn't belong really to anyone that people had a right to use. So they had a, a right to use the resources in, in, the, in the world so for food, shelter, and, and clothing. So that was a, a right that actually um, uh, was so important that when, um, for example, the, the, um, the, um, uh, the Norman invasion in, in, in Britain happened, and uh, so the, the new lords uh, took all the land and made, um, made um, and closed that and said, yeah, no, no, you can't hunt there anymore. So the Robin Hood kind of thing that uh, there was a, so there was in 1066 and by 1217, there was a crisis. There was revolt on the doors uh, because people demanded to have the right um, to, to the commons because uh, they, uh, they, um, they, they, they lost the, um, the ability to, to make a, a living and found that an unacceptable um, an unacceptable circumstance. And so in that, in that time, so that's why the, the Magna Carta and the cousin of the Magna Carta was signed at the same time was the Charter of the Forest was signed. So that Charter of the Forest actually reestablishes the commons for, for British people. And so, and so what, what happened like all over the world now is that our Western society that I'm, I'm a member of went along and established that system everywhere that basically we took the commons away. And so the commons were then taken away again in Britain um, uh, in the, in the, um, during the enclosures. So that's actually comes, come back to that later. So the time of enclosures where uh, 
peasants were removed from the land to make a uh, place for sheep uh, and, and other, um, and other uh, ac activities. And so, so that, that distancing um, from, from the commons actually was then exported all over the world. So that's what happened you know, in the Americas, in, in New Zealand, and, and, and everywhere. Um, that uh, this, this uh, idea that you have a right uh, for subsistence based on the land uh, was was um, was abolished. So so as a consequence, uh, we lost the connection with the natural world, and uh, also we lost the relationship with people that are based on generating our livelihood from the commons. Because for that you have to trade, you have to collaborate, you have people on the same piece of land that have to negotiate. So we lost we lost that connection with each other and with the natural world. So then I would like, so, so basic income in a way, so that's, that's why I mentioned it, that we don't have that commons anymore. So now we can, we can say we wanted to have that commons back, uh, but you know, that will be a hard process. So what do we do in, instead of having that commons? And so basic income in a way repl replaces that, that loss of the commons in a, in a way, in a monetary way. So that's the, the way the world works right now, that we kind of have a basis for subsidy. For, for the basis uh, basics of life, and um, so now you know if you if you are um, proposing to have a basic income, there will be of course uh, arguments against it. And so here I I uh, plotted the the main. Oh, let me ask you stop here and just ask uh, what I've said before about the commons. Um, and uh, are there any questions or like the the um, uh, effect on inequality about um, towards um, uh, um, diminishing um, natural resources and and um, are there any questions that you have? I don't know if there are any questions from the the um, where would I say if somebody wrote on the chat will light up. Oh, okay, we'll light up. Okay. Okay. So now now we're going like okay. So the basic income, you know, may be a way of, of replenishing or like substituting for, for that kind of um, the commons. So what, what are argument against them? So one argument is that people will become lazy. So that's, that's something to be avoided at all costs. That's actually a moral uh, argument. Um, and then that you have, um, that you have to, um, so that you have to work to earn money is the, the moral argument. So you don't get anything for free. And uh, the, the other main argument is unaffordable. So like you can't you can't do that. You can't afford just paying somebody basic income. It will ruin your economy. That's that's usually the the, um, the arguments against it. And so I I will now kind of try to to disentangle these arguments uh, in a, in a way that makes sense to me. But of course, if uh, there may be other people who uh, uh, there may be other opinions on, on that. So will people get lazy when they receive a basic income? There were actually a lot of experiments now or like trials done uh, recently. The answer is no, they will not get lazy. They still do stuff, but it's, it's uh, stuff that actually um, is uh, there that people become healthier and they can make uh, choices like in their relationships and careers and consumption. So like if you are, for example, under a... Um, a, uh, like what what we have now in, in New Zealand, um, uh, that you you will um, have a, a, a welfare system, so be it um, work and income New Zealand or um, disability benefits that are based to relationships. Um, then then you are kind of bound by these relationships. So if you are not paid to take care of your child who is sick, if you are um, if you have to stick with your partner because they support you, and if you leave them, you want, there are all of these these relationships that that not having a basic income uh, ties you into. And so, having a basic income will actually give you uh, the opportunity to make choices about relationships, about careers, about consumption, and you can work for things uh, that matter. And you can refuse work. That is self-destructive, for example. Like whereas otherwise you have to take that job, otherwise you starve, or you, there will be dire consequences for you. 
Now you can just say, no, this kind of work I know is wrong. I will refuse to do it. You can work in a lot of work that is done, is done in less, um, in jobs that, uh, that isn't usually paid, is in jobs that are not consumption based, like, you know, have just helping people. Uh, is, is not a consumption-based activity, uh, taking time for people to, to build relationships. Um, and you can acqu uh, acquire things that are more permanent. So instead of buying the cheapest thing out there just to get that over, you can actually uh, have a long-term plan to buy things that actually have value and permanence that you can repair or that you can, uh, that can, be, can be reused. So Martin, is this, is this from research on trials of basic income exercises. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, so there's no question that people become healthier and feel better about their life. They feel more in control. The, some of the stress that, uh, that, I'm, that was uh, part of the eight giants that, that goes away because you're not constantly stressed. And so it's good for, for mental uh, well-being, for, even for your body too. I mean, they're connected. Um, and uh, and people say see that like in this trial they can they can make choices and uh, and they they you know they don't get lazy they just do they, people do think most people are you know they are intrinsically wanting to do things that are good for them they are good for their family they are good for their neighbors uh, and so people do things they're just usually not uh, not remunerated so you don't get a they're not paid and so like now you would actually have time to to do the, them in, 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 uh, seriously and, and do them well. And so, uh, so like saying that people just, you know, lie on the couch and watch TV, uh, some people may do that, but the majority of people get very much, they feel in control with their life and want to do things that help other people. So that, that seems to be a, a, clear, a clear result from, from all the trials that are out there. And, you know, no trial right now is perfect because they are always very limited. Like a lot of times they give it to, they say it's a basic income, but they give it to people who are out of work. And, you know, people who are out of work, that's, you know, like it's not a, a, a representation of the population. They have, they're out of work because circumstances made them out of work. Um, and, and so and so there's no real perfect trial at the moment. So but from all the, the piece, bits and pieces that people can put together, uh, there's people don't are not lazy and people spend their, their time really well to do useful things. And um, then the, the other um, you know moral argument you need to work to earn money. So I mean that's you know, like if you look at actually how people earn or get money, is a lot of people just inherit it. So there is money around that they get from, from inheritance. They get it from others. So people, you know, have rental houses. And so you take income, the, the, the money from other people because you earn the means of, you know, like it used to be production. Now it's the, you know, the means of getting money from other people. Uh, so, so there's a lot of, lot of, you know, like make money work for you, for you, like you know, make your your money work for you. So that that kind. Of, so a lot of people just get money from from that, and of course you have to to work for it as well. But the whole argument that you, know, you have to work to earn money is is not really an argument that that is 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 true, especially by by uh, you know uh, people who would be um, uh, you know in in a, in a that have accumulated a lot of wealth, they probably don't have to, they work to it, uh, they work, uh, sure they work, but they probably inherited the money and they, to get that wealth, they probably got money from others. So, so and, and the, the problem is of course that only paid work is considered work. And that's, that's a fundamental problem. So if you take care of your, your, your child who's sick, if you, you know, uh, you're involved in a, in a, in a, a charity, so that, that work is not paid and is not considered work. So, so our system makes work only, uh, makes only paid work valuable work, which is nonsense. But that, that's, that's the state where we are in that, that, um, that uh, all, all non-paid paid work is, is, uh, is not, um, by, by some people, not considered work.
And so then, you know, so if, if you consider that you can inherit money, that you can make money work for you, then a citizen's dividend, which is one of the name of the name for basic income, actually makes sense. You're part of you know, like you're part of your your community, you're part of the company that's our society, like you're part of a you're a shareholder of a company in the in the capitalist world. And so by just being part of that, you get a dividend from the benefits that are generated by that company. And so and so that that would be the, the, the reason for a citizen's dividend that you could that sometimes a uh, basic income is called that you as a member of society you inherit the right to a dividend that may be paid by others, but you have the right to that because that right is also based that you don't have the commons to 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 work from. So you're basically baseless in, in what what else you can do. So how do you pay them for a basic income? Well, so there's uh, you know discussions on how much money you save when you change the system. So, you know, there's lots of calculations, but they are all, as far as I can tell, based on, on, uh, assum on, on missing assumptions. So you see like, okay, you get rid of uh, work and income, you get rid of all of these, you know, uh, administrative uh, positions, you get rid of, um, you know, means testing and all of that run around that, that people have to do. And, and you save a lot of, of uh, money uh, that way. And, um, and, and, but then, so that's usually the only costs that are considered, but you would also, for example, uh, save money. Like now, yesterday was in the news that they equipped the police with, um, with spent $45 million, uh, $45 million to equip part of the police to be a um, defender compatible, I mean, trained. So that money you know, in an equal society, you know, where, where we don't have crime, that diminishes in an equal society. Maybe you know, like that's money that is never in these calculations. That's never considered as a, as a, as money saved. So there's a lot of lot of um, uh, um, uh, uh, areas where where you would save a, a lot of, of money if if you are after money. So that's that's the other the other question. Then you, you know, like you can do uh, alternative taxing. So you can change the tax system, and you know it's it's a made up system i mean it's a it's a it's a it's a system that is very flexible what you can tax so there's there's a lot of things you can tax uh, especially if you want to improve the environment and there are also alternative financial frameworks and so one of them that has now been you know pursued for a while is modern monetary theory uh, so where you say debt doesn't matter so that old you know bookkeeping where you know politicians run around and say we balance the budget so that has been out the window now for a long time, and you know the world still ticks along, and things seem to be fine. Uh, or like something more radical, like the ideas of social credit that um, that uh, you know would would, uh, would have never been tried out. There was a political party here for a while, but so there there there's ideas on how to finance this, and uh, but I I don't get into I don't want to get into this. Um, there, there's a lot of ideas around this and uh, it's very controversial. So I just mentioned there are mechanisms in place that people thought about how to finance it. Um, so now I just want to kind of wrap up with going a bit through the foundation, the history of basic income. Um, and um, so the origin, so some people think that uh, Thomas Moore and his work with Utopia actually uh, first proposed um, uh, basic income, uh, basic income. So that what is proposed there is more like a, a basic idea of basic services. And so the so why Thomas Moore probably wrote this was that he was um, very dissatisfied because that's the time when the the uh, enclosures uh, started again. So when people peasants were removed from from uh, doing subsistence, and so so that's kind of like the the background why he actually probably thought about writing Utopia. So he, you know, like looks, so poor all of a sudden, uh, the, um, the, the question of how to deal with poor uh, shifted from the church because it was then so widespread to something that government should address. And so he came up with this uh, utopian society. If you read it, it's actually 
nothing that you want. So they have slaves and gold chains and all kinds of things that seem absurd. But I mean, he, he basically the 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 um, or the, one of the the, uh, the the things that he um, uh, proposes or is in his in his utopia is basic services. So so people um, you know can have always food, have always a uh, way uh, to live. And so uh, Johannes Levis, um, so he was um, uh, a contemporary and apparently friend of Thomas um, Moore. So he uh, actually proposed something about the same time to assist the poor. And so there was actually like a, a direct a demand or suggestion to, to assist poor people. Uh, so they don't have uh, basic services, but really assist poor people directly by, by government. Uh, then uh, uh, Thomas Paine, um, in, uh, uh, so he traveled back and forth between the United States and, uh, and uh, the UK, or England at the time, I guess. So he um, uh, wrote a treaty, a, 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 a diary and uh, justice. And so he actually was probably the first one who really proposed the basic income. And so there the idea again is, um, that he sees the, the commons, the world, the resources of the world um, be, uh, to be there for everyone. And uh, at the time, you know, uh, land was uh, taken away from people. And so to, to kind of pay them off for it in a way, to, to enable them to, to benefit from the riches of the land, uh, he uh, proposes a, a basic income that the government actually pays to, to everyone. So it's really, uh, again, based on, on that idea of the, the commons being there for everyone. Uh, then um, in, in the UK, uh, Mabel and Dennis Milner um, proposed a state bonus. And there was around, you know, after World War II um, uh, and uh, the same um, uh, CH Douglas um, uh, proposed a whole economic system that's called social credit. I know there was a party here in, in um, Art Forum Museum for a while. They still exist, but it has very, um, I think they've also changed focus a bit on, on actually the core social credit. If there's somebody online who wants to contradict me, they can. Um, and then uh, Milton Friedman, so the, the you know, famous um, uh, economists, uh, also came up with something that addresses inequality and, and uh, which is a negative in context, kind of balances, redistributes wealth. And, and, um, to, to uh, um, alleviate um, uh, yeah, people in poverty. And so nowadays, um, so the, uh, the, um, the idea of a basic income is uh, funnily enough, uh, it makes for strange bedfellows, it's promoted by progressives and the left to some extent and uh, also by neoliberals. And so the, the, the neoliberals have, um, they have, so it's a very interesting uh, uh, constellation. So the neoliberals see a, a basic income as a way of reducing government. So they are, I would call them a pragmatic neoliberal, neoliberal. So they, they know, you know, like you can't have people starve, whereas you know, if you're pure ne neoliberal, you may consider that as an option. <laughs> so they are practical in, in, a, in a way. Um, and uh, so they see it as a way of maintaining, uh, ma maintaining the, the system and, and, and having, reducing uh, government spending and government uh, administration organizations. Um, so now, um, the actually, so if you say the left, so the Communist Party actually in, in the United States wrote a, wrote a uh, quite a good um, explanation why they are against the basic income because they think that it's just propping up uh, the system and uh, you know leads to uh, if if the if the basic income is is not a livable basic income, then of course you you uh, you you are. Um, um, prolonging the, the, the system while, while suppressing the, the masses. So that's, that's why they are, um, so if I say the left, so the very left of the communists are probably less likely to support a, a basic income. And so since the global financial crisis, which actually is a funny name if you think about it, it's actually a financial system failure, 
um, that that is um, that is uh, happened in two thousand eight. So so it's uh, it's globally yes. Um, so since then, um, uh, basic income has been uh, uh, you know like been more talked about because the the um, we are probably reached the um, the limits of exponential growth and the system starts to creak and so now like you know there's all kinds of uh, alternative things being thrown at that you know people never never thought about like you know running deficits in, in government and also um, uh, spending you know giving big people a basic income to keep that system somehow somehow going so that since 2008 there have been a lot more uh, reports trials um, uh, uh, writings about basic income and then of course now with the global pandemic, it's actually really what happens. It's a good name for what happened. Um, there's, uh, again, uh, increased interest in, in um, a basic income because, uh, yeah, so how government responds, like, you know, our, our government response is, is uh, you know, not really helping the people who, I, I would argue, is not helping the people who need it most just by giving them money. But it's all run through wage subsidies, through companies who, you know, take a bit and leave a bit. And so it's it's not a real you know I would argue not a, a real um, a good response actually that helps helps poor people to to sustain this global pandemic. But it, that's so that's why it's talked a lot about instead of running it through the old system to try something new. And basically that's now what happened in the U.S. So they just give people money to do uh, to survive. It happened in Spain, and so there's a lot of uh, ad hoc trials that are done um, throughout the world. So with this, um, I would like to conclude. Oh, it's happening again. And um, yeah, so I would, I would argue that it's stopped to, um, we should stop the suspension of disbelief. So that's an intentional avoidance of critical thinking or logic in examining something unreal and impossible in reality. So we are, we are doing that all the time. So we're telling our children, yeah, the world should be fair, but you know, people sleeping in car, yeah, that's just like how what happens. So we, we should just like try to, I would argue we should try to step out and re-examine what we're living in and, uh, and, uh, and you know, trying to, to do um, the, the things that we are aiming for. And, um, and I think a basic income may be, uh, a good point to start there. It's not the ideal, probably, but it gets us on the way. So with that, I would like to thank you for your attention and um, would like to ask if you have any questions. Also from people online, if there are any questions. So there's some interesting um, discussion around the world and, and in New Zealand as well about not, only, not a basic income, but essentially an allocation of, um, I guess you call carbon credits to every oh. individual in the country. Yeah. Yeah. And, and by giving everybody a set of carbon credits, mm -hmm. one can choose whether to use all of those huh. or, or in fact trade some of those for to others who want to consume more, yeah. if, if you choose to live in a way that consumes less, mm -hmm. so that's it's a it's kind of a there's there's a parallel here in the thinking yeah. about about creating something that is a universal benefit that that people can then make their own decisions yeah. about how they use. Yeah, so that kind of strikes a chord with me. So I think in energy, and of course, you know, our energy is a good part CO two driven. So that's basically a, 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 a um, you know, you give everyone an energy allocation that they can use in one way or the other. So I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm curious about, I mean, I, I think that's, uh, you know, in, in my books, how the world works because energy is something real, whereas money is, you know, a, a concept. So, so I, 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 I think that's a very interesting um, approach to to uh, reach equality, because then of course you know, it's it's worth um, you can you can trade something that that is uh, that uh, um, that is um, a real thing. Yeah. That that's what's really nice. Yeah. Ash, I have multiple questions. Yeah. Let's start with the idea of fairness. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, so it's a fair. I don't think UBI would be fair actually, because oh. at the end. 
billionaires or like millionaires who still have the money, but right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they get two thousand dollars, or like, you yeah. Know, but, 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 like but they do. <laughs> so it doesn't necessarily solve what you mentioned about, like the powerful taking control over the resources. Uh, it does not necessarily stop them not taking things. It's just more people, I assume, would have enough resources to actually do the consumption more. So well, yeah, so, so that's so yeah. The way I see it now, maybe I. So something more people will have more money to consume more things. Uh, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, so more people will have more money to consume more things. Uh-huh. How does that? How is acceptable in terms of like our consumption? Anyways, mm. because it doesn't necessarily have the environment if we consume more things, even if it is more sustainable. Let's say, assuming it would be sustainable. Uh-huh. Yeah, so the, yeah, so so I think the the one point, like you know, if you give, uh, I mean, the unfairness that you give, uh, you know, two thousand dollars to a billionaire, I mean, they will just laugh about it, so it yeah. doesn't interest them at all. So, yeah. I mean, so in a way, you know, I I think that unfairness is, in a way, um, you know, I think negligible. And also, like you know, on the other hand, like a billionaire can't turn around and say I haven't gotten it, like you know. You, you get it, but I, I mean, but I didn't. So I think yeah, yeah. that fairness, I think, is 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 there. But um, your point about, um, uh, I guess, resource use uh, and uh, and uh, consumption, um, uh, uh, like increasing consumption. So that's actually a valid point. So, for example, you would be surprised that uh, what is it, Mark Zuckerberg and. Elon Musk also proposed, you know, like to have a basic income. And I think there the motivation is to like give people money to spend to to uh, you know to click on ads and uh, and buy stuff. Yeah, and and so that that is um, that there there is a, a point to be made. And uh, so like that, that is that is uh, that is true. Like people will will be able to to spend things, but on the other on the other hand, like it it avoids these kind of um, Extreme um, resource consumptions uh, that are that are caused by by um, ha- having income or wealth inequality, like as exemplified by the by the uh, the fish model, you know that I, I showed. So so at some point, it just will not be economically feasible to explore exploit resources, and we just stop there. Yeah. You've got three questions in the chat. Oh, yeah. how, how do I get to them? I've got the one on the left side. And, uh, if I could add to the point okay. of, uh, of fairness, uh, it would be fair, let's say, to, to, uh, to everyone in New Zealand if you had a universal basic income. But if you compare countries, then uh, would it be fair for a lesser Country like which, uh, which doesn't have like um, doesn't have New Zealand, uh-huh. and if you are allowing your citizens to have more money to consume more, would it be fair for say Nepal uh-huh. for people in Nepal? Would it be fair for them that you are using a lot more resources where well, they can't because they will not apply the same model? Well, I mean that you know, like I I guess the idea would be that. Uh, everyone in every country would uh, would have uh, a basic income to draw on. That does not seem feasible to me. Right? Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's a, like, I know that it's an idea. It seems nice and everything, yeah. but to but, imagine every country will have yeah. basic income and the same amount because yeah. you need to have the same amount as well, right? To be fair. Uh, eventually, it should it should yeah. balance out. Yeah, yeah. So. But see, like I'm encouraged that you, that um, that uh, you know by the argument that it will make uh, 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 you know like the the counter argument that people are worried that um, that it will ruin our economy that if we had a basic income that things would just stop to uh, like growth wouldn't happen. I'm actually quite encouraged by that because um, you know I think maybe we don't need uh, that much uh, yeah. growth in consumption. Well, <laughs> Okay, so just um, going to the uh, the chat. See Steve Keen in carbon credits wise response this week. Uh, Being longer. I think it's income. more for your information rather than. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I think yeah, it's just scroll up. Yeah. Climate is information tonight. Okay. 
Then let's see. Excellent, Martin. Thank you for broad logical clarity. Well, that's, thank you, Wendy. I know Wendy, so I'm. <laughs> but one thing I ponder is the amount of money required to live in dignity must vary living in the middle of Auckland and living in cheaper parts of the country. And yeah, so that's actually a very good uh, good question. Um, in, in a, so I, if, if you pay people in Auckland the same amount of money, then you would pay, uh, uh, pay people uh, like somewhere in a, in a, in a non-urban center. What eventually would probably happen is that people would move to these um, to non-urban centers because they knew that they would know even with a basic income you could have a decent living there. And so initially, like you know, you can't just pull the lever because it will probably just um, uh, you know, like you would have to pay a lot more um, in, in, a, in an urban center than in a, in a rural community, let's say. But uh, you know, that's an implementation uh, problem or like an implementation question. But yeah, I, I think eventually, you know, like you could think that the whole country would balance out and actually you get you get a, a you know. A, you get rid of the expensive how of the housing bubble in Auckland, maybe to go in that way. Yeah. Let's see. I have a question. This yeah. Uh, how when when people receive an income and uh, have no wealth, uh -huh. they just spend it all. Yeah. And the people who they're paying their money to have got the wealth. Yeah. So the wealth is still accumulated by the yeah. people. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a way of re relieving poverty. It's not a, I mean, like, you know, we have that system now, but I get it gives the people at least breathing space to be non stressed and, you know, think about what they want and argue for other things. But yeah, I mean, like, our, the system we have right now, based on, on the, the framework uh, with money in circulation, the way it is now, you're right, there's still, yeah. Uh, there, there's still uh, inequality that, that persists even in a, with a basic income, unless uh, you adjust taxes in that way that you take slowly money away from, from the wealthy over generations. Yes, so that's a political question how you do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another thing, there's an assumption there uh, in you know, that if you give everyone money, then people will do good. Uh, yeah. By nature, to by environment, right? Yeah. I don't agree with it uh, mm -hmm. in the sense that we can just look at people here in New Zealand or even in the center. We all know climate change is happening. We all know it's wrong. We all are, like, most of us are working towards like mitigating its uh, negative impact, right? Yeah. But if you look at the carbon footprint of most of us, it's higher than what it should be, ideally, that yeah. we know of. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If we see that, in practice, that actually people we know that we need to be lower than this, but we still don't do it, even though we have resources. Uh -huh. Then why would, why should I believe that if you give money to people, then they would automatically be good? Uh -huh. If that was the case, then we would be good. Like people actually having resources now would be good as well, right? Yeah, I mean that that's you know a valid question. If you ask the person. You know, should we do something about climate change? We would say yes, yeah. but somehow it gets lost in the process, and our government, in the end, kind of acts in that regard, kind of goes that way. Yeah, but it's, yes, but like a lot of individual level as well. That's, yeah. my, that's my concern. At yeah. an individual level, we don't do it enough uh, that we should. What we claim we should do, right? right? There's that hypocrisy within us, like every one of us. Uh -huh. So the assumption that just giving money would Elevate that aspect of people. Uh, I don't. So it's a. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's uh, you know. I I guess you would think then that people with that extra money would uh, do more things that would be harmful to the environment in the end. Is that is that your argument that you? Well, that would certainly help to consume more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So consumption, however sustainable, is like worse than no consumption. I would imagine, right? Yeah. And I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I I partly agree with you, but I don't think the problem would be people who are currently on benefits or you know scrambling to live. It'll, it'll be, it'll be the sort of slightly higher than 
up to middle income earners for whom you know an extra thousand dollars a week means that they can go and spend money on things they wouldn't otherwise do. Um, and I think that's where you get a big surge in, in consumption. But, but, but that that group of people is shrinking, <laughs> you know, like that. That um, the middle class is is a, a smaller and smaller proportion of, of our of mm. our world. Yeah. Interesting idea, though. Yeah. By the way, you've got one new message. Oh yeah. Uh, you could just carry okay. down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm going to have to go anyway. But um, thank you. Yeah. yeah thanks. Yes. Cool. Thank you. See ya. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah.